Good morning, Bethesda Church. Who is enjoying the cool weather now? You don't miss the summer, Kay? You don't miss the summer? It is so good to have you here at Bethesda Church. And if you're worshiping with us online, we certainly do appreciate you tuning in. And a lot of you tune in every week. And I, we really do appreciate you. And like I've, I've said in the past few weeks, we have some empty seats in the pews. And we'd love for you to come and visit with us. The announcements this morning, there's not a whole lot of announcements in here this morning. We do welcome Brother James this morning, who will be speaking with us in just a little bit. And so we want to remember him in prayer as, as he brings us God's word today. Uh, look through your bulletin, look through the prayer requests that are in there, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more in just a little bit. There is a council ministry meeting next Sunday night at, or next Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Uh, the reminder for the Young at Heart meeting at this Thursday at 1030 for a time of fellowship with the Davidson County Senior Chorus. So the sign-up sheet is located outside the sanctuary to, through these doors right here. Uh, and Bethesda Bells, as I've mentioned in the last couple of weeks, the Bethesda Bells is starting back up. And if you would like to participate and be a member of the Bethesda Bells, see Tracy. I don't know if you have many people. Are you filled up yet? Not yet. Not yet. So there's always room for a few more people. Today is also a very big day. Today is Membership Sunday here at Bethesda. And I've mentioned this, I think, last week that since we have disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church and we are Bethesda Church now, everyone has to become a member of Bethesda Church. Today at the end of the service, please stick around if you would like to join Bethesda Church, you will have the opportunity to do so. This is the first Sunday of 10 through the rest of the year and it's in the, it's in the if you receive the letter, I think there's the next two weeks, Dan, is that right? The next two weeks you'll be, it was three, it's three, isn't it? Something like that you will be able to join. So if you haven't quite made up your mind today, you've got several weeks ahead of you to do that. Let me say, and I hope I'm not standing on James's time by saying this, uh, I didn't grow up in the church, but 50 years ago I was blessed to come to this church. That little lady back there in the corner and her dad and mom brought me in here, and uh, I, had an, I had a church family for the first time. It means a lot to have a church family. It means a lot to have people that you know pray and care for you. And it's meant a lot to me in 50 years. A lot of you people, Jerry and Faye, are just two of the people that I have admired the way they have lived their lives. And so <clears throat> it means a lot to have somebody close. This is a good church family. It's a great church family. So if you're interested in joining, stay around this afternoon or just a little bit after service, and we'll, uh, we'll take care of that. Is there any other announcements? If not, I'll turn it over to Tracy. Thank you, Gary. Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I hope you're well. Um, we'll stand up and sing uh, one song out of the hymnal, then we'll sing a contemporary song after that. So the first one is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, on page 526 and we'll sing all three verses. Please stand. Thank you. 
You may be seated. You want to stand or sit or sit? I brought some little ones with me this morning. But good morning, Bethesda. I normally have a few more than this, but this is what I have, and that's what the Lord has provided. So it's all good. So... This morning I have the morning prayer, but I got a little card, a thank you card, and I kept it to read today 
because it's from VBS. At VBS, we have a lot of things that we make, and we do a lot of things with them. But each and every year, <clears throat> we try to donate them to a church, an organization that can use them. Well, this year, it went to Promise Baptist Church, and you all may know David and Annette Hedrick. But we shared our VBS stuff with them, and there is a boys' home in Denton, and we also shared with them. So I wanted to let you know, we do a lot of work with VBS, and it goes a long ways throughout the community. So always remember when we ask you to do a little extra or give us a little bit of money here and there, it's all for this. That's an outreach for us. And so we really appreciate them for being able to share and us for being able to share too. So it went a little bit farther than it normally does, but I did want to share that. But these kids are amazing. They're awesome. They're the backbone of our church. And I know that's not what I'm supposed to be up here talking about, but I, I wanted to brag a little bit about these children because they are awesome. But this morning we do have several people on the prayer list, but I want to share something with you. It was sent to me, and I had something else wrote down I was going to share, but this was sent to me, and it says, Worry is a conversation you have with yourself about things you cannot change. Prayer is a conversation you have with God on things that can be changed. So there's a lot of things in this world we can't change, but we can lift it up in prayer. And that's what I want each and every one of you to know. Prayer goes a long ways. So um, I'm going to read the names in our prayer book today. And we have a lot. Stanley Welborn, Kim Hooser, Joan Bodenheimer, Carlos White, Unspoken, Georgiana Ray, Angie Williams and her family, Gary Thompson and family, Dorothy and Spencer Tripp, Barbara Thomas and Belle Fain, Don Haycock, Donna McDowell, Vicki Limley, and the family of Becky Lookabill. Is there others that I need to add? Some unspoken or anything you might have that we need to add? Anybody? Okay, well let us go to the Lord in prayer and pray for these people. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, today I pray for each and every one of these names on this list. I ask for your divine healing. You took our sins on that cross and your word says that we will be healed by your stripes. So Father, I stand on your words and ask for your healing for these on the list. Have mercy on them. Comfort them. And all that they do and all that their needs, guide and deliver them from whatever may be going on in their lives. We all have so many things happening to us. Lord, let them open up their hearts to believe in the strength that only you can give them. Lord, we ask all this in your name. And Lord, let us pray together as we pray the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? And for our special music today, we'll be playing a video. Um, most of you know this song already, but please feel free to sing at your seat while it's playing.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you have given. We uh, ask that you be with us uh, during this service, be with James. Uh, we thank you for our church family. We ask that you bless this offering. We ask that you multiply it for your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Did you know that your being here this morning is an offering to God? That you're giving the good Lord Jesus Christ our undivided attention is, is a blessing. And when I look out over this audience, I can't tell you how much it means to me to see my family my friends, my neighbors, people that are good and godly. There is one in the audience that has no idea how much impact he has made on me over the last 30 years. The hugs and the greetings that we get occasionally warms my heart, and I thank you. He is my brother in Christ. And the songs that we just sang says it all. Give me Jesus. Jesus is the answer to the problems that we face today in this world. And I want to give you thanks for the opportunity to come this morning and to share my thoughts about three subjects that are dear to my heart. Number one, God and Jesus Christ. Number two, my children. And number three, my grandchildren. This is not a sermon. This is not a, a lesson. This is just a ramblings of an old man. And I have two parts to this service this morning. The first will be about good friends and our best friends. And the second part will be about a young man and his struggle with life and his fight that turned into a family issue. It turned into a, a bigger issue than anyone could ever imagine. How many people know what the abbreviations BFF means? Maddie, what is that? Best friends forever. Us older people didn't have that opportunity to, to BFF nobody. We just went up and clapped them on the back or give them a chest bump or whatever. I woke up this morning thinking about Andrea, one of our daughters that used to have a best friend. His name was Nicoly Golly. She took Nicola Golly everywhere, didn't she, Brandon? That was her special friend. And there was no one, but it was her special friend. Now, we all have people that we consider our best friends. But how do we go about picking and selecting and deciding who is going to be that best friend? What scale or what measurement do we use Now, we want somebody that knows us and understands us. That's one requirement. We want somebody that can give us support and help us when we're down and encourage us when we're struggling for the answers of all the things that are floating around in our head. We don't want just a friend during the good times. And, of course, we want somebody that we can trust. Someone that you can share your most inner thoughts, the, the most intimate things, the, the things that come across your mind that you're embarrassed or you're afraid of. Someone that can take those thoughts and hold them dear to their heart, too. We want someone who will be loyal and dependable. And we want someone who could be a good listener to sit and listen as we ramble and we talk and we complain and struggle to make sense of what this world gives us. But most of all, I think we want someone who loves us. 
Can you imagine a best friend that doesn't love you? Not possible. Proverbs in 17, verse 17 says, a friend loves at all times. Now imagine that, all the time. He loves you. If you want to turn in your Bible to James, the book of James, we'll begin reading in the fourth chapter. The 13th verse, beginning. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into this or that city and we will do business and we will make money. Why? You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist, and then it appears for a short while, and then it vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this and that. All this boasting is evil, and anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't, it, and doesn't do it, sins. We're looking for that best friend. We're making plans. We're trying to decide how we're going to live our life. And part of that decisions that we're making is who is that good friend going to be that we can confide in and can lean on and can worry them to death. I don't have to tell people, anybody, of the trials and the tribulations that we worry about. We become concerned. We, we face the struggles of, of daily life. And the more we struggle, the deeper in depression we become. The more anxiety we build up. And you know what happens as we, as we build up this depression and, and the pressure builds in us, we begin to push away from God. You know that without a good friend, that's a heavy weight. That's a lot of care. That's a lot of emotions. Every one of us has dealt with life issues. We all have things that bother us. We all, we all live. We have bills to pay. We have jobs to do. We have decisions to make about our future, about our retirement. We have, the list goes on and on and on. And my granddad used to say, it's easier to pull a wagon with two horses than it is with one. Jimmy's nodding his head, and you, on that wagon train and you've got two mules and one of them's kind of slacking off, what do you do? You poke him. And that's what a good friend is for, is to poke us when we start slowing down, when we start having issues. We, we want that, we need, we have to have that best friend. But as we face all these struggles, we face all these trials, and we begin to get further and further away from God. In desperations, what do we do? We turn to the world. We try to find the answers with, from the people around us. We go on the internet, we, we talk to people, we go to psychiatrists, we go to doctors. We, we want a drug to fix this and we want a drug to fix that. The answer is Jesus Christ. When we Pick that best friend. It needs to be who? Jesus Christ. In the, same, in the same book of James, in chapter 4, verse 4, he says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? 
if we become friends of the world, if we turn to the world, we're telling the world that we hate God. Can you imagine hating God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. We see how bad the world has gotten as we go about our daily life. We look around and we see and we hear such ungodly things that are hard to believe. Our society t today tells us that you know, there's no right or wrong. There are people that says there is no God. Or if there is a God, he's imperfect. That God makes mistakes. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ and God as one are perfect. They are absolutely the beginning and the end. We have society today that says that there's no male or female. We see the news blitz and the the write-ups and the articles about there's no heaven or no hell. Ungodly, worldly life is an enemy of God. Do you know that 2,000 years ago, the sins that the people that walked the shores of Galilee with Jesus Christ were just as deadly to them as they are to us. Satan is still as powerful today as he was then. Jesus came and died on a cross for us. He was that ultimate best friend. He was that one that would give you the shirt off his back. He would give you the sandals off his feet. And he gave his life for us. Our sins, not his. I don't like reading off a script because it confines me. We're not faced with any new sins today. We've not created any new sins. Have you thought about that? But Satan has took mankind's own creations, their own things that mankind has developed. The internet, the newspaper, the radio, the TV. All of these magnificent advancement in our society has made it easier for Satan to attack us, to beat us down to tell you over and over and over there is no God. We live in a world that is full of instant gratification. It, we live in a world where nothing is gained by hard work or study. We live by a rule of thumb is what's in it for me. our youth and our young people and even us as adults are living in a society where there are no Christian values. People grow up around us and in our neighborhoods and in our country that never hear the word of Christ. They never know the love that Jesus Christ has for them. I love Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, as Christian parents, we are tasked to teach our children. If you go to Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction in the Lord. We have to learn, we have to change our operation manual. 
We have to understand that our children is our future. We have to put the emphasis on Jesus. We have to put emphasis on how we teach our children, what we teach our children. And it's not only what we teach them, it's how we speak around them. It's how we act around them. Are we good role models for the children around us? Are we good role, role models for my neighbor? Basic Christian principles. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I don't know of anybody that hates herself. When I look in the mirror in the morning, I see the most I see somebody from Yellowstone. <laughs> Actually, no. We have, we have a task in front of us to instill in our children who their best friends should be. We hear all the time as, as parents, we talk, well, I can't tell my children. I'm not going to tell them how to do this, and I'm not, I'm not going to. We have an obligation to God to instruct our children in right and wrong. We have a, a duty to God to spread the word, to spread the gospel. And that doesn't just mean going from door to door. It means going from your bedroom to their bedroom and, and talking to these children and praying with them and let them know that when they're in their darkest, deepest problems, Jesus Christ is always there. We have to explain to these children that there's nothing to be ashamed for or ashamed of to talk about Christ or, or, their, or their faith in public. We have to spread the word that Jesus Christ is our Savior. The good Lord has blessed my family with four great, beautiful children. He even blessed us greater with six awesome grandchildren. You know why God put grandchildren on the earth? So that grandparents can take them and spoil them and, and do everything they want to with them and send them back home and say, you take care of them. We do that, don't we? Have you as a parent or a grandparent ever stopped and talked to your child about Jesus Christ? Have you ever imagined, have you ever thought of what kind of impact you're making on those children? They're not infants. They're not babes. They're young adults. I was interested in what young people and most, com most uh, pointedly it was I asked my two granddaughters who are gracious, lovely, beautiful people. I asked them if they would please write me a small story, a small letter about what Jesus means to them. And I was expecting a generic, Jesus loves me. This I know, the Bible tells me so. What I got blew me away. It instilled in me that there's hope for this world. It's, it's, it's a, there's a hope. There's, there's a great expectation for this young generation that's coming up behind us. And I asked both of them if, if they would mind if I could share their words with me, with you this morning. I grew up around Jesus as my whole family went to church, but I never really knew him. I went to church every Sunday, but I, I wouldn't really listen. I just thought it was a chore. Can we relate to that? <laughs> 
I started going to church more often, and I was in the sixth grade. My best friend showed me how it was to live with God as my number one friend. And on April the 30th of 2023, I was baptized. It was the best decision I've ever made. Jesus really turned my life around and showed me what his eternal love is like. That's a sermon. And most of all, we haven't even felt all of his love. Can you imagine what heaven is like? He taught me to be patient with others because he's still working with them. And even though Jesus was beaten and bruised, he still thought it was worth to die for our sins over and over and over. Jesus may not be here on earth, but he is he who is in my heart. And that is what Jesus means to me. The other one, it took me a while to take that in and to imagine the, the joy that I felt. And Jesus is my best unseen friend. I don't need to see Jesus because I have felt Jesus. He's different than any other best friend I've had I have felt his comfort when no one else knew how disappointed I was in myself when I made bad and wrong decisions. I felt his tap on my shoulder telling me to keep going when I didn't want to. And I have felt him by my side when I thought I was all alone. And when I was alone, I never was because I had my best friend Jesus. Jesus is the best friend. He is the friend that you can count on any time you go to see him. There is hope for this younger generation. There is hope for this evil world. We have to go into that world and we have to fight Satan. We have to be strong in our convictions. We have to be able to live the words that we speak. And I'd like to turn to another part of the story that I want to tell this morning. And I ask that you bear with me. The scripture that I want to use for part of that story is, comes from the book of John. Chapter 15. Beginning at verse 12 through the 15th. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do as I command. I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. November the 4th, 2007. My son lost his life in a senseless <clears throat> murder. 
It was a day that my family has struggled with. You say, well, that's 2007. That's a long time ago. To be exact, it's 6,154 days. It is 531 million. 705,600 seconds ago. But to me and my family, it is that far away. Michael was a great kid. He grew up in a broken family. His mother and I divorced and separated. He struggled with the, the facts of life. He struggled with the issues of life. He had the biggest smile you could ever imagine, the, the twinkle in his eyes, and he was fun to be around. He could quote you scriptures and make you feel foolish when you tried to argue him. But in his struggles with day-to-day -day life, like so many of us, we fail to ask God. We fail to, to bring Jesus into the equation and Michael made bad choices. Michael will become an addict. He become an alcoholic. He become abusive. He become a, an angry person in his soul. But he never forgot God. He never forgot Jesus. He was the type of person that could pick up a guitar and start playing. He could play the drums. He could play the piano. He could sing. He had all the, the good things that I wish I could do. We enjoyed his time. But Satan crept into his life. And bad decisions grew into worse decisions. He was the type of person that would miss work to take one of his good friends to work so they wouldn't lose their job knowing that he would lose his job. He would give someone his last penny knowing that he had rent due and was going to get kicked out and would be homeless. He would take his clothes off his back and put on someone that had no clothes. And we asked, well, all those good attributes, why couldn't he make good choices about life? That's a question I cannot answer. The day of his death, he went to find a part-time job at my request. And he went to a steakhouse, a restaurant. And while he was there, his car broke down. He couldn't get a hold of nobody. He left me a voicemail, 531,705,600 seconds ago, and I still have not had the strength to listen to that voicemail. He was stuck at the restaurant. So a good friend said, stay with me, I'll take you home. They go out at the end of the business day, they go out the back door, and there waits a man with a shotgun and says, I'm here to rob you. You're, go I'm, you're going back in the building. We're going back in the building. Michael was the oldest person there. The rest were young girls who were wait staff. And they argued, and they had a conversation, and the man said, if you don't go in the building, I'm going to shoot all of you. Michael made the best decision in his old life. He put himself in front of those people. 
and he lost his life. We make plans. We, we make expectations of ourselves and of our families. We, we have things that we're going to do. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. But God says we're only here for a second and we're gone. One hundred and forty seven thousand six hundred and ninety six hours ago, all of my expectations vanished. His best friend, his sister, has struggled and still continues to struggle. We we talk about the things that affected Michael in his life. We talk about the things how it affected my life. I become that person that wanted justice. I become that person that wanted revenge for my son's life. I can tell you what anger and hatred feels like. When you walk into a restaurant and you see someone, you think, is that the man that shot Michael? He's about the same height. Hatred will eat you alive. And it ate me. I failed to turn to my best friend. I, I failed to go to God. I failed to ask Jesus Christ to help me, to guide me, to support me, to tell me I was going to do it on my own. And I got deeper and deeper away from God. But there are family, friends, and neighbors in this room that supported me, that hugged me, that told me that God was in charge, and told me that there's a thing called forgiveness. The hardest day of my life was to ask God to forgive me of the thoughts and the things that I had on my mind in those moments of anger and hatred. And then on the same breath, I had to ask, tell God that I had to forgive the man that took my son away from me. My daughter and I, we talk about how Michael would lament to his position in life and he, how he would pray that he could leave this world because he knew he did not fit in this world. And God granted that wish. So when we talk about best friends, when we talk about Jesus Christ, when we talk about the evils in the world, do we know what the answer is? It's spelled J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. We all have that opportunity to tell our story to God. We have the opportunity and the freedom to come into this room, any church building, any place where we can gather together and worship God. Jesus is the answer, and Jesus is my best friend. Thank you. Thank you, James. If you will, please stand with us and turn in your hymnals to page 349. 
we will sing Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. begin our membership portion of this service. Thank you, James, for that uh, testimony and uh, reminder that uh, out of the mouths of babes comes Jesus' wisdom. Um, I am honored and humbled to be able to be part of this invitation today. Uh, to be a part of Bethesda Church's inaugural uh, membership uh, ceremony. We will uh, have two parts. Our first part will be a public proclamation, uh, a, uh, uh, an acceptance of what it means to be a member at Bethesda. Uh, we will have to do a responsive reading at the end of that responsive reading, we will have a benediction. Our church service will be over, but you won't be a member just at that moment. Uh, we do have, and I hope you've gotten the letters, we do have applications that need to be signed to complete the membership process. Uh, once the benediction has uh, been given and the service is over, then we will, uh, the uh, forms will be handed out You'll complete those, we'll sign them, and we will have our first uh, members uh, of Bethesda Church. Uh, uh, um, and I had some other things I was going to say, but I'm going to pass that and go directly to uh, if we can put the uh, uh, responsive reading portion up. I will ask everyone to stand as you were able. If you would like to, if your intention is to join today, I'll ask you to come down front as we have this responsive reading together. We will in some ways be doing both parts of the service today because our congregation will also be some of our newest members. Uh, we don't have existing members of Bethesda Church to, to warm you, welcome you into the congregation. So we will, we will wear both hats today. Uh, and uh, if you would, uh, um, we'll, we'll just go through the responsive reading and, and do that as we can. So if you would, please stand. And, and those that are, uh, are able, and if you would like to, uh, just approach the, the front. And as we're coming forward, I will go ahead and start the uh, responsive reading. Um, 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, I present these persons to reaffirm their faith. To all persp prospective members, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him? And your response is? to everyone in the family of Christ, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We welcome you in Christian love as members of Bethesda Church, as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation. We renew our covenant to participate faithfully in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. And we'll ask that the benediction be. Thank you once again for coming this morning and receiving the blessings that James has given us through the Lord. And as we leave this morning, don't think of it as leaving the building. You're taking your best friend with you. He's still holding your hand as you leave this morning. When it gets scary and you're confused and troubled, just squeeze his hand a little tighter. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together into this blessed night this morning. I pray, Father, that We'll take to heart all the things that you have tried to teach us this morning. Hands, whisper in our ear, and if it takes it, poke us with a stick and make us understand how much you truly love us. Be with us and bring us back to the appointed time next week. For I ask it in thy name. Amen. Uh, one other thing, if there are those that have not received, if your family does not have a copy of the bylaws, Teresa, I think, has some of those copies if you need them. Um, and uh, I'm not sure who has the forms, but we'll pass out the forms, membership forms now. Okay. Okay, the ones, ones that are joining today can stay. If, if you're not here to join today, you're, you're uh, welcome to... Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't want to rush you out the door, but but you don't need to stay unless you. We, we'd love to have you. Uh.